Most of the notes that I write are published online, and I've mentioned in previous videos that the service that I use to do that is Obsidian's own paid service, Obsidian Publish. But Publish has its own faults. It's paid for starters and there's no way to self-host it. It's also been very slow for me for quite some time. I also wish that there were more options for customizing it, and I wish that I could include it in some sort of automated pipeline. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a free alternative to Obsidian Publish and how to set that up from scratch. It's called Quartz. What is Quartz? Quartz isn't actually a community plugin. It is a separate tool that happens to work really well with Obsidian, and that's because it was designed with Obsidian in mind, but you don't have to use Obsidian to use it. Now, when you're looking at publishing markdown notes, there are actually three components that you're looking at. The first is the tool that actually creates or edits those notes and stores those notes as markdown. Now you can use Obsidian for this, but you could use a text editor or an IDE like VS Code as well. Next is the part that turns that markdown into HTML. HTML is a better format, it's more portable for viewing online, and it is easier and it has become the standard pretty much for most websites. So Markdown is going to have to be converted into HTML, which is what Markdown was made for. And that tool that does that is called a static site generator. After you have this bunch of HTML, you're then going to have to find a way to put it online. And putting it online means putting it on someone's server that could be yours, but it could be somebody else's. Now with Obsidian, it does all three of these roles, but Quartz only does the middle part, the static site generation, which means you'll still need to use something to generate your markdown notes, and you'll still need to have a hosting provider. So there are many combinations that you can choose for these three tools or one or two tools, but here's the workflow that I'm gonna show you. I'm going to use Obsidian to generate the source text, which is the markdown files. I'm going to use Quartz as my static site generator. And then as my hosting provider, I've chosen GitHub Pages. And just to give you a sneak peek, this is the end result. This is a site that I've created using my notes generated by Quartz and also hosted on GitHub pages. And just like you might expect with Obsidian Publish, clicking on the links works just as well. There's even a graph view. So you can click on that and okay, it only has a few nodes right now, but you get the idea. So I'm gonna show you how I set all this up, but I gotta say up front that this really isn't for everyone. I think for most people, Obsidian Publish is still the easier option. It is convenient, it's right within Obsidian, and $8 a month really isn't a lot to pay for a tool if you use it a lot like I do. However, if you do want to do it this way, I think you're going to find it easier if you at least are familiar or comfortable with working in a terminal, if you've worked with Git and GitHub before, and also if you're comfortable with Node.js or NPM or NVM, or at least can copy and paste these commands. I'm also only going to show these steps on a Mac because that's what I'm using. So these commands might look a little bit different for your operating system. I'm going to leave a link in the description below and in the first pinned comment to the documentation that I used while I was going through this so you can check out the right commands for your operating system. Step one is to download and install Quartz. Quartz is open source, so we just need to copy or clone the repository that it's in and then save that locally so that we can work with it. We're also going to need to install some dependencies for it. So I've got a fresh repository. In fact, I don't have any repository. I'm just in a directory that I want to put my repository in. And we're just gonna go through the Quartz documentation. So the first thing we've got to do is clone the actual Quartz repository. So we're gonna do that. And if I just check here, there's Quartz right there. I'm going to call that something else because I don't want it just to be Quartz. So I'm going to do MV Quartz in public. All right, so let's just check. All right, now going back to that, we're going to CD into that one, doing it in public. It also says that it requires at least these versions of Node and NPM. So I do just want to check that. All right, 
So it said 18, I'm fine at 21. And then my version of NPM is 10 and it's 9.31. All right, so I'm going to NPM I. And what this is doing is, is it's going through Quartz and installing all of the dependencies that have been declared there. So that was pretty quick actually. And then I should just do NPX Quartz create. And now it's saying which one I should do, how to initialize the content. So either empty quartz, copy an existing folder, or symlink an existing folder. Okay, well, I'm just going to do empty quartz because this is entirely new. And that sounds right. Um, choose how quartz should resolve links in your content. All right. It says treat links as absolute path for quartz three and Hugo. Treat links as shortest path for most obsidian vaults. Okay, well, I'm going to do that. So then I've installed Quartz. So it's here. So let me open that folder now. So that was in Vaults, doing it in public. And this is my new Quartz repository. This is what it looks like as Quartz over here. And I guess this is where the stuff is going to go. Step two is to set up the GitHub repository. Now sign up for a GitHub account if you don't already have one. This is still free. You can create as many repositories as you want. And we're going to be creating something brand new for this. Okay, so before we go too much further though, I do want to make sure that this is synchronized to GitHub. because so I wanna keep this as a Git repository. I know that Quartz is pretty good at that. So I'm going to go to setting up your Git repository here. So I already have cloned and set it up locally. So now I need to create a new repository on github.com and do not initialize a new repository. All right, I'm going to create a new repository. It's going to be called doing it in public and then it's, it'll be a public one. I don't initialize it with this license. I'm not going to put a license right now. Create repository. All right. And I'm going to copy this. And I believe I'm supposed to go back. So git remote add origin. And this is mine. Oops. Okay. So this is configured to the original quartz one. So I'm going to do git remote rm origin and then git remote add origin. So then, okay, so I'm looking for mine to be here and then upstream is the quartz GitHub repo, which is right. Okay, then it says I can sync npx quartz sync, no pull. All right, let's try that. Okay, now let's go back to that GitHub repository and see if anything happened. Okay, so it is here. Cool, cool, cool. Step three is making all of this an Obsidian Vault. So we're going to take the folder or the repository that we already have, and we're going to open it in Obsidian. Then we can configure Obsidian to look the way that we want. One of the cool things here is that I now have a Git repository that has Quartz in it, but there's no actual content in Quartz. Now, Quartz turns Markdown into HTML, right? So I'm going to have to create the Markdown and I'm gonna do so in Obsidian. So now's the time where I'm going to open the same vault in Obsidian because these are just Markdown files, so I should be able to. So then I'm going to open the folder as a vault and I'm going to go down to the doing in public one, click open, and this is loading it up for the first time. So Obsidian is doing some indexing. So one thing I am going to do is I'm going to go, so on the left is my, um, my main vault, my personal vault, and I'm going to go into Obsidian and copy over the hotkeys one because I really just hate transferring shortcuts and I have like very particular shortcuts that I use all the time. So I'm going to do that Obsidian and then just copy over the hotkeys. Now let us see if that works. All right, so let's do L. All right, so now that's working great. Okay, I don't like how this looks. So, okay, I'm gonna make it light just for now, just so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to look for a theme. 
and I'm going to install and use this one. So now I want to install some plugins. And first of all, I'm going to turn on community plugins. Then I'm going to browse. And I know that I definitely want long form. So I'm going to install that. Okay, so now that I've installed the long form plugin, I'm going to go into here and it says to begin, I have to find or create a folder somewhere in my vault in which I'd like to create my novel. <laughs> right click it and select create long form project. All right, so I'm going to click that create long form project because I know that Quart said this is where it should be. And this is going to be doing it in public. Okay, I'm going to create it there. That created another thing with another index, but okay, that's a little annoying. The one thing that I'd like to do actually is create a readme. So I'm going to add a readme here. Okay, so I've written this readme, which is basically just saying what this is and how to give feedback. And also I've got an outline of how I think things are going to go, but I'm not entirely sure. If I go back to Quartz here, I'll see that for authoring content, they actually have um, a standard format that they recommend. This is the format that Quartz is going to be looking for. So because I'm using Obsidian, I'm going to create a templates folder. Actually, that means I'm going to install the templater one too. You can use the templates um, core plugin, but you know, I prefer templater. And I'm going to put templates there and that it doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to create a new folder called templates. And here I'll put um, chapter and I'll put the stuff that they have there, except this one is going to be, yeah, I'm going to make it a templater template file title draft. Okay, that's fine. And I'll leave that free. All right. So that's the template sort of draft, uh, the chapter template. And this is what I always wanted to do. So just to confirm. Yep. So it's going to use templates. That is fine. And then I'm also going to go to the long form. I seen template. I'm going to say that's the chapter because I don't really use scenes, but I'm going to use that. All right. So if I go here and I'm going to create a new scene called introduction, which is really a chapter, it does have those things. So it has a title draft and it has an empty tag. So I say the introduction goes here. Step four is finding a way to link your local repository to the repository on GitHub so that when you make a change, it appears on GitHub as well. I want to see what this looks like, actually, because I haven't tried that yet. I'm going to go to this. Oh, yeah. So syncing my content. So now I can go to NPX Quart Sync. Yeah, I'm just going to copy this. It is already linked to my GitHub, so I should just be able to paste this in. And all right. So this is just pushing to GitHub. So let's see if we can see that. All right. That looks like it because we should have, yeah, yep, that, there it is. So this is the outline and stuff. All right, now to see how it looks like, um, there must be some way to build it. So I'm going to build and preview quartz. I'm going to just copy this and then go back here, paste that. This is saying started a quartz server listening at here. So I'm just going to command click that. And this is what that looks like. Cool. So go index here. Oh, this is, oh, this is going to put all of the things under the folder. Great. Introduction. The introduction goes here and there's the readme here. So that's actually really good. This looks pretty awesome. Step five is to host your vault online. Now there are many options for this. I'm going to go with GitHub pages, but you can also use Cloudflare or Netlify. It's really personal preference. I'm just going to use GitHub pages because I'm already using it right now. I just have it on GitHub so people can see it there, but it's not rendered. I want what I'm seeing here to actually be visit visitable online. Do that. I am going to have to look at hosting it. So 
the host quartz online and I'm just going to do GitHub pages for this, honestly. So in my local quartz, I need to create a new file. So I'm going to open this up workflows and then I'm going to create a new file here and I'm going to call it deploy.yaml and then I'm going to copy this whole thing. Is there anything I need to change? I don't think so. Okay, so I'm going to save that. So it says go to the settings tab of my forked repository and in the sidebar click pages under source click github actions. So this is that. Settings, pages, and then under source I'm going to do github actions and then I can just do an npx quart sync. So from here npx quartz sync. All right. Now let's see if that worked. So it should be Nicole van der Hoeven, which is my GitHub username, then github.io and then doing it in public. So let's see. All right. This is great. So this is it. I need to change this so that it doesn't say this is a blank quartz installation. Um, but it is at least there and the introduction is here. Okay, so this is definitely it. Step six is optional. You can actually stop here and your site is already accessible from your username.github.io. But if you want to use a custom domain, like if you have a name like doing it in public.com and you want that site to show up there, then you're going to have to make some adjustments. First, you need to go to wherever you're managing your domains. For me, that is Parkbun. Really good service, by the way. Funny name, but a good service. And when you go to the DNS records for that particular domain, you're going to need an A record. Now, that is an address record. And this is from the GitHub documentation and the Quartz documentation. You're going to have to put the answer or the value as these four different IP addresses. What this is doing is that it's saying that when anyone requests this site, it should refer it to one of the GitHub servers. Now let's go to GitHub to complete the other part of that conversation. So we'll go into settings for the repository here and then pages. I've already set it up so you can see the notice here, but what you're going to need to do is in the source here, you should select GitHub actions. And then in the custom domain part, you can type in your domain, click save. It'll do a DNS check. It might take some time for the DNS changes to propagate. This is notoriously frustrating. Just give it a bit. Don't panic. Maybe give it an hour or so. Sometimes it takes longer than that. It can be really frustrating. But after a while, come back and check it and hopefully it'll be all resolved. And then you're going to be able to tick this Enforce HTTPS checkbox as well. Quartz just won the annual Obsidian Specific Awards called Gems of the Year for 2023 under the category Best Tool. Does that mean that I'm giving up Obsidian Publish and switching entirely to Quartz? No. See, I believe in using the best tool for the job, and there are a lot of jobs. I have a lot of use cases. I still plan to use Obsidian Publish for publishing the majority of my Obsidian notes. I also, for work, use other static site generators. I use Hugo and Gatsby for code documentation and also for the website. For my own personal site, I use Hugo, and now, I'm also using Quartz for a new personal project that you might have caught a glimpse of. I don't know if I'm always going to have that combination of tools. I really like Quartz. I like it enough that I do see it potentially taking over some of these use cases. I'll let you know how I go with that. In the meantime, check out Quartz, and if you decide that you like it too, then consider supporting the developer Jackie Zhao on GitHub. Now, I don't know him at all, but he's made a great tool and I think that he deserves a recognition for it. And speaking of recognition, thank you to Gilbert Sanchez or Hayes Gilbert on my Patreon Discord server for sharing his experiences and trying out a lot of these static site generators and also inspiring me to finally give this a go. Thanks for watching. Ik ben een boek aan het schrijven. Heb je het gezien?